I don't get it. I don't understand it. We should be making love and you're making jokes. Look, Andrew, when something hurts, I make jokes. You know, laugh, clown, laugh. What hurts, Ellen? What hurts? Tell me. I can't. All right, then let me guess. Got a boyfriend back home? No. Got a husband back home? No. Got two husbands back home? No. I give up. Andrew, I'm pregnant. That's why you ran out on me? In some circles, that's considered a very good reason. That's all. Isn't that enough? I have been going crazy trying to figure out what it was that I did to turn you off. Why didn't you tell me? Because you don't just walk up to somebody and say, Hi, I'm Ellen and I'm pregnant. Are you sure? Women know these things. Besides, the rabbit croaked. Does he know? Yeah, he even offered to pay for the rabbit's funeral. Sounds like a lovely guy. Yeah, and also a very forgetful one. We went together a year before he remembered to tell me that he was married. Glad that's over with. You still want the baby? Yeah, I do. I thought about abortion, but I love kids. And especially the one that's inside me. And I just can't destroy a future kid. He's very lucky to have a mother like you. Well, we're going all the way together. Just the two of us. You got room on that wagon for three? Hmm? I want to marry you. Well, look, Andrew, don't do us any favors. We'll be just fine. What favors? Look, suppose you were divorced and had a child. I just got there a little early, that's all. Look, Andrew, you don't want to complicate your life with a klutzy wife and a kid who might grow up just like hey, her. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't tell me what I want, I'll tell you. I've spent half my life building a business, taking care of it, watching it grow. I really wanted to take care of a wife and a kid. Maybe two. Will you marry me? Oh, Andrew. I hope our child grows up to be just like you. Ah, oh, sorry, I stepped on your foot. Feel it. Ellen. Andrew, with this ring, I thee wed. Andrew, with this ring, I thee... Oh. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, Ellen, it's okay, it's okay. One is all you need, Ellen. Right, Captain? I now pronounce you man and wife. system has been righted. Please go back to doing whatever you were doing. Come in. Captain, what's the emergency? Ha ha, that was your little monster. He just set off every fire alarm on board this ship. Now I want him locked up until he learns to behave or until we reach home port, whichever occurs first. Oh, Captain, aren't you being a little harsh? That's an order, Miss Landers. He's done all the damage he's going to do on my ship. But, Captain, he didn't mean any harm. You just have to understand 11-year-olds. Look, psychologists say that hormonal changes in free teenagers causes erratic, aggressive behavior, which just has to be channeled into more positive directions. Oh, thank you, Dr. Landers. Your range of human understanding is commendable. However, I wish you'd extend a little of it to me. I don't have to understand 11-year-olds. I have to run this ship, and I expect you to run the passengers, all 735 of them, including Arnold. You did say that's what you get paid for, didn't you? I'm sorry, Captain. It was my fault. I should have kept an eye on him. 
But I promise, you will never know he's on board. Thank you, Miss Landers. You may go. Does that mean I'm dismissed? Oh, Captain, if you just soak your shirt in baking soda, that coffee stain will come right out. Sunburn. You like to fish? No. I like to play the drums, but they won't let me. I like to play bingo, but I'm too young. This trip sure is a drag. I know what you mean, kid. Here. Oh, oh, right there, mm -hmm. right there. Oh, boy, you've got a lot of knots back here. I've earned every one of them. Tough crews, huh? Tough captain. I've never known anybody so uptight. Oh, come on, Jerry, that's an uptight job. Yeah, but why does he have to take it out on me? Because you're so adorable. Oh, oh I don't think he noticed. He's too busy pointing out my imperfections. Oh, bitter, very bitter. Sure sign of a woman scorned. Well... I've got five more days to be adorable. I think I'll do it in the purser's lobby. I struck a nerve, huh? Why don't you stick your thermometer where it'll do the most good? <laughs> Donald, do you realize you're the only man in the entire room wearing plaid? No, I didn't realize it. Thank you for reminding me. Plaid. They'll think you're the ship's golf pro. You probably haven't noticed, but I don't play golf. I know. You don't do anything but sell dental supplies. Monica, I sell dental supplies because I'm in the dental supply business. Only because my daddy set you up in dental supplies when you flunked out of dental school. But it's more than a business with you, Donald. It's an obsession. You don't know anything about the real world, the pain and misery. Oh, the poor Indians. Would it make you happier if I sold bows and arrows? I'm sure you'd be just as obsessed with that. We're going to talk about obsessions, Monica. Let's talk about you and that menagerie of yours. Do you mean my pets? Not pets. Nine dogs is a pack. And all those other things. Birds, fish, rabbits. All pets. A snake is not a pet. I don't have a snake. Only because the wolf ate it. Well, I don't spend nearly as much time with my pets as you do with your dental supplies. You don't even have time for your family. Jungle land is not my idea of a family. You know how I feel about bringing children into this pain-filled world. You know I'm past president of population control. Yes, we practice the ultimate in population control. Well, that isn't my fault, Donald. You're too busy, even for that. Scusi, scusi. A telephone call, Mr. Richardson. You can take it just outside. Thank you. Busy, busy, busy. <laughs> Hello. And this is Donald Richardson. You have a call for me? Hello. Oh, hi, Angel Face. Yes, I miss you, too. No, I'm not putting it off. It's just that I have to be very careful about how I tell her. You remember the love machine? No, not me, the book. Well, remember the guy in the book? Every time he broke up with a girl, he would do it in a big dining room where there were lots of people around and she was too embarrassed to cause a scene? Yes, well, it does have something to do with us. Well, divorce is just like breaking up, except with lawyers. So, we're eating in this big dining room. And as soon as I get back to the table, I'm going to break the news to her. I love you too, Angel Face. Oh! No, I'm not hurt. That was a hug. Bye. Oh, I'm sure that was very important, Donald. Did they finally find a cure for dental floss? Monica? I have something to say to you. You're not going to like it. Monica? Oh, Donald, no. You don't even know what I'm going to say. That telephone call. It's about Rocky. Who the hell's Rocky? Oh, you know who Rocky is. 
think he's my raccoon. Oh, he's dead. I knew I shouldn't have left him when he had a cold. Monica, your raccoon is not dead. It's us. We're dead. What are you talking about? My God! A divorce! Oh, Monica, what are you doing? You've been in there for over an hour. I'm depressed. I always show when I'm depressed. You'll be a lot more depressed when you see how wrinkled it makes you. I'm sorry if I embarrassed you in the dining room. It's just that I wasn't expecting divorce for lunch. Uh, yes. Well, it was supposed to be a good place to tell you. In front of 300 people? Why not tell me at the Super Bowl? Uh, yes. Well, I was going to write you a note, Monica, but you know you can't read my handwriting. No, it doesn't matter now. You want a divorce? I won't stand in your way. Not that I could. California's divorce laws are much too liberal. <laughs> Oh, you could get a divorce on the grounds I wouldn't give you one. No, Donald, you're completely free. How does it feel to be free? Well, I'm not quite sure. I mean, I've been married for 15 years. I've only been free since lunch. That's cute, Donald. I think that's how I want to remember you. Cute. Monica. Donald, there is one thing. And I know this is going to sound indelicate, but, well, we were married, and so I assume I can speak frankly. Speak. These last few years haven't exactly been chapters out of the joy of sex. <laughs> and uh, since our relationship was what it was, I assume there's been uh, another woman. Another woman? Donald, there's always another woman, except for the Fergusons, and that was another man. Hers, not his. Donald, don't worry. I'm not going to do anything foolish. I just want to know who she is. You don't know her. Ah, there. Don't you feel better now? I do. <laughs> so, there is another woman. That makes me the injured party. Monica, we're talking about divorce, not whiplash. We are talking about property settlement. And property laws aren't quite as liberal as the ones for divorce. In other words, Donald, the injured party, that's me, gets everything. The house and cars, what's in the house and cars, and then there's your business. Monica, it's my business. My business. D.W. Richardson Incorporated. I am D.W. Richardson. Only because my daddy insisted that you incorporate. Oh, you like that. Mr. Big Shot Incorporated. Well, just don't you forget that Mrs. Big Shot is a principal stockholder. That was daddy's idea, too. Monica, I am sick and tired of hearing about daddy. He's been dead for seven years. The way you talk, he's not only alive, he's still writing checks. That is a very tacky thing to say about the man who gave you everything. Monica, he is dead. Even he must realize that by now. And he didn't give me everything. He gave me a start in the business. I made the business a success. It's my business. My lawyers will tell us whose business it is. And I hope this other woman has a job, because you are going to need something to live on. <laughs> Looking for Pearl Harbor? It's a shame you never had your own talk show. Did you get another room? No, the ship's full. Well, maybe you can't afford one anyway. Look, Monica, I think we should talk about the divorce settlement. I mean, this is ridiculous. You can't have everything. There are ways, Donald. Sneaky, conniving, legal ways. To get everything you have and everything you ever will have. Look, Monica, that's ridiculous. You can't get blood out of a turnip. <laughs> Let's not talk about turnips, Donald. Let's talk about your new friend. Is she pretty? Attractive. I assume she's younger. What has age got to do with it? Ah, then she is younger. The middle-aged man and the young girl. Oh, it's so on the nose. <laughs> 22 isn't that young. 22? Oh, my God, Donald. She's a daughter you never had. That's not love. That's child molesting. <laughs> Monica! As Monica's attorney, it's my job to tell you that her entire estate goes to you. Donald! Mrs. Richards! 
Richardson. You shouldn't be swimming alone. I, um, I had a little fall today, Jerry. The doctor said swimming would help my back. Well, be careful. I hate to lose a passenger. There's so many forms to fill out. <laughs> Her own fault, swimming alone like that. But her poor husband, finding her just floating, face down. How's your back? Okay. The doctor said it was just a slight muscle pull. Why are you looking at me like that? Huh? Oh, I don't know. I was just thinking about all the fooling around we used to do on our honeymoon. I think the last fooling around we did was on our honeymoon. No, I mean in the swimming pool. Water fights, holding your head underwater. You used to love that. <laughs> well, we were younger then. You're as young as you feel. Come on. <laughs> he was just playing a joke, Doctor. Donald was very funny when we were younger. But he's such a terrible swimmer, he was always funny in the shallow end of the pool. Okay, that should do it. Doctor, will he be all right? Yes, he's going to be fine. But I only give his shoes a 50-50 chance. The next time he wants to play a joke, tell him to do it on the shuffleboard court. Just, uh, uh, What'd you say? Just a little drink, uh, margaritas, little drink. A little drink? Uh, yes, well, I thought that, you know, a few margaritas, nice little drink before dinner. I thought that might be nice. Donald, are you thinking of getting me drunk and seducing me? Why would I do that? To negotiate a better property settlement. Monica, if I thought seduction was the answer, I would have tried it years ago. It's just a lousy little drink to try and help you relax. Thank you, Donald. I don't care for a lousy little drink right now, especially margaritas. Well, I don't understand that. You liked them well enough in Acapulco a few days ago. Monica, I want you to have this drink. Yes? Scusi, it's only Nino with your d'oeuvre. Thank you, Nino. You, you can remove that tray now. We're through with the margaritas. Uh, no, no, Nino. Uh, not yet. You haven't had your drink yet. And I'm not going to. Take it away, please. Uh, my wife has made a mistake. Yes, but that was 15 years ago. Take it. It goes. Wait. It stays. It stays. Oh, really? It goes, and it goes now. Now, look, Monica, I am not going to argue with you about this whole thing. It's absolutely... He took the margaritas. So? He took the margaritas? Let him drink them if he wants to. Margaritas never killed anybody. <sighs> God. Do you know him? No, no, no. Uh, do you? He's one of the stewards. Wasn't my fault. Mama. He's alive. Of course. Hey, well, shouldn't you be pumping out his stomach or something? We could, but most people with sprained ankles don't like that. Uh, it's his ankle. He sprained it falling down those stairs, and he dropped a pitcher. Almost a whole quart of margaritas. What a waste. I'm sorry I didn't call last night, Angel Face, but I was busy, very busy. Of course I'm not angry, Angel Face. No, of course not. No. Well, I feel the same way about you, Angel Face. Well, soon, very soon. 
Yes. But, Doctor, I thought you said I just had a pulled muscle. Why do I have to have another complete physical? Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, please, trust me, Monica. We must be alert for internal injuries. Oh. It's a bit tender, huh? Yeah. I have some liniment that will fix it right up. That's strange. They were all here yesterday. Who would want a bottle of poison? I want you to have this drink. He's trying to kill me. And now, ladies and gentlemen, a feat of skill and courage. And now, ladies and gentlemen, a feat of skill and courage. This is a real gun. And this is a real bullet. And this is a real match. This is very dangerous. Using this mirror, I'm going to shoot over my shoulder and attempt to strike the match without striking Dina. One moment, please. I want to make sure there's nothing out there. We did this once and sunk a Mexican submarine. <laughs> no, but seriously, folks, this is very dangerous. I'm going to shoot now. May I have complete silence, please? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was pretty good. Oh, well, if you like that, man, you're going to love what comes next. Mm -hmm. Hey, Bozo. Yeah, you at the bar. You didn't like that trick? A great trick? He sits there like a rock? Where's the cheering? You know what happens to people who don't cheer to the Marcos? Huh? <laughs> Hey, just kidding, cowboy, a blank. And that wraps it up for now. You're beautiful. God bless. Give that dead man at the bar a drink courtesy Danny and Dina DiMarco. And do like we do after the show and drink rye whiskey, rye whiskey, rye whiskey, rye whiskey I cry. If I don't get rye whiskey, I think I will die. Four times a day. Whoever sits in that chair gets shot. <laughs> At least, brother, you get a free drink. All I ever get is a headache. I'd like to place a call for my husband. No, I don't have the number, but uh, it's the same one you always get for him. Thank you. Hello, Angel Face? No, this is Mrs. Lover. And every highway and more, much more than this. I did it my way. Regrets, I've had a few, but then again, too few to mention. I did what I had to do. Oh, I've been looking for you. Uh, yes, and I've been looking for you, Monica. There's an act in the lounge I want you to see. Donald, Come on. Donald, I don't want a drink or entertainment. I want to talk. Yes, but this is a very special act. Yes, that's what you said about Tiny Tim. Come on, Monica. This is very important to me. Please. <laughs> Why don't you sit there, Monica? It's the best seat in the house. I don't want to see a show, Donald. I want to talk. Hey, yes, well, we will talk. I promise you, Monica. Later, we will talk. Hey, 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 you gonna sit through all of this again? Uh, yes, well, my wife hasn't seen the show, and don't spoil it for her. I want her to be surprised. Okay, it's her funeral. Yes, it is her funeral. Uh, uh, two tapas, uh, two vodkas uh, uh, with, with tonic. No mixed drinks for me, please. I mean, uh, I'll just have a beer, unopened, with an opener. Yeah. 
Just a new health kick I'm on. Yes, sir. Uh, look, Monica, why don't you turn around so you can see the DeMarcos? I don't want to. I want to talk. What is there to talk about? Well, I have reason to believe that... that you're more upset about the property settlement than I thought. No, I'm not upset. I was upset, but I am not upset anymore. Everything is fine. Just fine. And now, ladies and gentlemen, a feat of skill and daring. This is a real gun. And this... is a real bullet. Donald. Uh, yes. I have a confession to make. Uh, yes, well, if it's about another man, I don't want to hear it. There's never been another man. Well, what kind of a confession is that? When I realized how upset you were, I, I wanted to find out what could possibly make you react like that. So I did something silly. I, I called Angel Face. Yes, well, that's perfectly naturally. You called Angel Face? Shh. You called Angel Face? I know it's not the proper thing, but I'm glad I did. She's not exactly the, quote, other woman, unquote. She's just sort of a sweet kid. Well, what did you expect, a vampire? I expected a vicious little home wrecker. There's no such thing. It's the people inside the homes who do the wrecking. Well, Angel Face told me that you have the third largest dental supply company in Los Angeles County. She's very proud of that. Yes, well, so am I. It's just natural for me to assume that Daddy bought it for you. Well, he didn't. I know, I know. He loaned you the money, you know, and you built it up from nothing. So and you paid him back. So much to do, I never knew all that I'm before. Really sure they overdone Angel it. Face explained it to me. Well, it really says something about a woman when a stranger has to explain to her about the man she's been living with for 15 years. I'm sorry, Donald. I'm 37 years old, and I've spent my whole life assuming that Daddy's money could buy me anything I wanted, including you. I thought it had. I don't blame you for being upset about the property settlement. Well, it was like I was trying to buy you back. I was. But I've changed my mind now. We'll split everything 50-50. Forget about the business. I'll sign my stock over to you. It's really yours anyhow. I never had anything to do with your success, and neither did Daddy. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Bozo. Is, uh, is he talking to me? No. Yeah, you at the bar. You didn't like that trick? Trick? A great trick you don't even watch? Do you know what happens to people who don't watch the Marcos, huh? Oh, my God, no, don't show... Oh! Oh, sorry, I didn't mean it. No, he did it honest. Not your fault. I'm... I'm... I'm not going to die. Oh, no, Donald, please don't die. I'm not even going to fall down. I'm not shot. Well, of course not, but I am sorry about the shirt. <laughs> yes, folks, more hilarious hijinks from the DeMarc ho ho hoes That's the show for today. But remember to tell your friends we always kill the audience. <laughs> I don't know how. I must have got my bullets mixed up. See, I got two kinds, regular blanks like I usually use. Hey, didn't I shoot you before? Well... Anyway, that's what I got you with then, a regular blank. I also got these blood blanks. They're kind of a jelly bullet with fake blood in them. See, that's what I show the audience before the match trick. They look like real bullets, right? <laughs> they look terrific when they hit. Uh, we use them in our Godfather sketch. Uh, what I don't understand is if you don't use real bullets, then how do you do the match trick? Oh. oh watch. Bang. A trick match. Of course, you don't think I'd let Danny point a loaded gun at me, do you? <laughs> He's my husband. <laughs> well. Yes, well, the boat is docking early tomorrow. And I thought it might be a good time to pack. I uh, never did say thank you for what you did today, jumping in front of me like that. Yes, well, it doesn't take an extraordinary amount of courage to jump in front of a blank. Donald, are you in love with her? Oh, uh, her. 
yes. Well, that's not something a man likes to discuss with his wife. No, I, uh, I guess not. It's just that, well, if you are in love with her, there just isn't much I can do to fight it. After all, she's 22 and I'm 37. Together you're 59. I didn't know you'd thought about fighting it. Well, I've... I've thought about a lot of things lately and... Well, since we do have this last night together, maybe I should try. Donald! I mean, a woman might have some chance if she at least tried to fight. Even at 37. There is a lot to be said for experience. Donald. You are in for the fight of your life. Adam? Captain? Well, congratulations are in order, Miss Landers. We arrive in Los Angeles tomorrow a.m. and it looks like we've both survived my first passenger cruise with hardly any calamities. At least nothing we couldn't handle, sir. Oh, Captain! Oh, Jerry! I've lost Arnold again! Come now, madam. Oh. Perhaps you've just misplaced him? No, no, I've looked everywhere. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You, you would tell me if he fell overboard, wouldn't you? Oh, oh Rita, <laughs> calm down. Don't talk silly. Oh, it's just all my fault, don't you see? I'm a terrible mother. My poor, sweet little pumpkin. This is my fault. I spoke too soon. Looks like we do have one last calamity. Would you try and find that sweet little pumpkin before his mother loses complete control? Aye, aye, sir. Passenger Arnold Merritt, report to your mother in the purser's lobby, please. All is forgiven. We'll even let you play the drums at the farewell dinner. No, this isn't Arnold. This is George Havlicek. I've got Arnold. Yeah, he's perfectly all right. We finally found something he likes playing better than the drums. It's up to you. All right, I'm in. Deal is four aces, beat you a pair of queens, George Albon. Come on, Come to Muncie, Indiana. I hope you'll give me a chance to win my money back. George. George, it's so tacky to pay gambling debts in public. Uh, may I see some identification, please, Mr. Havlicek? After all, this check is drawn on an out-of-state bank. I'll be back in two weeks, Rita. <laughs> Go now. Don't look back. I want to remember this moment. Adam, you are so corny. Sexy, but corny. Arnold. Well, Dr. Quicklove, I see you haven't lost your touch. It's my bedside manner, Jerry. They don't leave me alone. Ah, uh, Miss Landon. You ain't sure? Yes, yes, I have some chores to do. When you return, would you like to join me in my quarters for a spot of lunch? Well, Captain, I'd love to. Good. I've invited Mr. Martin and a few of the other officers. Shall we say one o'clock, then? Fine. See you then, Miss Lett. Do you mind if I call you Geraldine? I don't mind if you don't mind. <laughs> and I can 
get you an insurance policy, Luella, guaranteed for life. How old did you say you were? 32. Perfect. Won't even have to take the physical. Martha's been my secretary for years. She's overprotective. She's jealous. She's like my mother. Nobody's good enough for me. But don't let it frighten you. Couldn't I meet her some other time? Oh, Mr. Kane. Oh, Martha. Welcome home. How was your uh, trip? I'll let you be the judge, Martha. This is my wife. Well. <laughs> it's about time. <laughs> All things considered, Jerry, it's been an incredible trip. Yes, it brought Donald and me closer than we've been in years. Ah, you're under the magic spell of the love boat. Once it's touched you, you'll never be the same. <laughs> Thank you. Roger. Dad, why would you You forgot to tell me where you live. I don't even have your phone number. I you in the book? How can you spell your name? Dad! Dad! Oh, dear, you love my family. I've got four brothers and two sisters and a 